So hello, my name is Hankor. I'm part of the JUST development team. And I would like to use the following 15 minutes to explain you the, or well, give you a quick overview on the tooling we use to ensure a continuous delivery and continuous testing on, on JUST. So continued delivery is kind of a trendy topic in software industry. The whole point of the idea is to deliver the new features and also bug fixes to your final users as fast as possible compared to when, when the feature is really written by the developer. So as, as soon as the developer writes something, you have some mechanisms to ensure that this is safe and it's reach your users as soon as possible. That's actually a very familiar concept uh, to free software because we usually have that mantra of release early, release often. So it's not new really for us. And it's especially true in the OpenSUSE project since we have a Tumbleweed, our rolling distro that I will say that the rolling distribution is actually an extreme example of continuous delivery. So this is in our case the, the just workflow somehow. So there's a just developer writing something that's how the average just developer looks like. So he writes some software and then he sends that new source code to a, software, to a source code repository. Nowadays we are using GitHub for that because it's the most popular uh, repository or set of repositories for free software. So everybody can find you there and can help you there. Everybody has an account so can open a pull request. And uh, once the source code is, has passed some checks that we will see now, it goes to our build service. Uh, as you already know, our build service kind of takes source code as input and outputs binary software that our users can directly use. Maybe R RPM packages in a repository or just the ISO images that they can install. So let's take a look to every one of those uh, steps or leaps. Uh, so first from the developer computer to GitHub, as most projects on GitHub we use a pull request model. That means that every time a developer wants some software to be integrated, he has to request that opening uh, a so-called pull request and another member of the team has to take a look to the source code and have to approve that change. That uh, ensures First of all, that every line of code is read at least by four eyes, um, but it's also a nice opportunity to discuss uh, uh, alternative ideas on how to do the same thing. And it's usually the case that we overlook something. We are close to introduce a bug because we just didn't realize about something, and so it's good to have fresh eyes looking at the same thing. And we take that opportunity to do also a lot of automated work. So for example, uh, we run the unit test. A unit test is, unit test is basically an uh, automated test that, that checks uh, one of your components. So every time you write a component, you also write a test to verify the component is working. That, in theory, protects you from breaking that component in the future. Uh, of course, the fact that all the all the pieces of a machine works doesn't imply that the whole machine wor works as expected, but it's already a big step forward. Uh, so we run all the unit tests automatically, and we also do a, all other quality checks. For example, we check that every file has a li license header that is uh, very important and relevant always in software, but especially in free software. If you want know to know more, if you want to know more about that, uh, tomorrow will be a presentation by Kulo about all the automatic mechanisms we have in, in OpenSUSE to verify licenses. And it's, it's quite a system, so it's, it's interesting. And he will, Kulo will be presenting also with Kirian, the OpenSUSE lawyer, so check the schedule if you're interested on that. But we also do things like spell checking because we are, most of us are not native English speakers. And yeah, we check for the style to make sure everything looks the same, no matter who wrote it, and things like that. So for all that automation, we use Travis, which is a service uh, on top of uh, that integrates very well with these pull request mechanisms that uh, GitHub has on one side, and on the other side, integrates very well with other services that provide added value. 
and we also use many of those services, so like for example, uh, coverals. So with coverals, we measure uh, which part of our source code is covered by the unit test, um, which is more important what part is not, so that we need to write tests for that. Uh, we use uh, uh, Code Climate, that's a service that spots parts of your source code that looks yeah, suspicious, that looks like more complex than there should be, so maybe you can refactor a little bit and improve it. Some of our repositories also use Inch, which uh, measures the coverage of documentation, so we know which parts of our source code is really documented. So it is, it's quite interesting service, and how we do it is probably even more interesting, because uh, how Travis works is every time some software gets merged into the branch of the repository, it pops up a virtual machine for you, it puts your software in the virtual machine, runs all the tests, uh, reports the result, and then the virtual machine is, is, is done and it disappears. And that's very convenient, but the most problematic part for part is that virtual machine is actually Ubuntu based. And uh, although we actually managed to make it work for some time to have all the just checks and and just, compi just compiling and working and all that on Ubuntu just for, this, for the sake of testing, it was yeah, quite hard to maintain. So quite recently we have changed the approach and now we use Docker. So uh, what we really do is inside that Ubuntu machine we, r we run a Docker container that contains all an open source system so everything is running virtually in a real open source system so we can check uh, the run checks that are closer to reality. So if you are interested in how that uh, Docker integration with Travis works for continuous integration, you can, tomorrow there's also a talk by Ladislav who is over there. And I, I really don't know the title of the talk, but it should be something like using Docker for continuous integration and Travis, yes. Just check the schedule, it should be there. So that's all we do to ensure that uh, all the source code that enters the repository is in good safe. Good safe. So next step, as I said, is going from there to the build service. And for that, we use a different uh, continuous integration system called Jenkins. In this case, it's, it's not a service because Travis is a service, but Jenkins is a self-hosted solution. So we have Jenkins servers installed and, and controlled by us. And actually we have two of them uh, because we have two build services. Uh, uh, because uh, we use the OpenSUSE build service that you all know, but also SUSE has an internal one for creating our enterprise products that is exactly the same software and the same service, but in a different server. So both of them take or are always watching our GitHub repo. That's very important that it's the same GitHub repo, so the source code is exactly the same. Uh, just is exactly the same code base in all SUSE products and in all open SUSE products. So, so it's only one uh, source code repository, but there are two Jenkins instances just, just for that. So what it does is always watching what happens in the repository, and if something new happens, it sends a, a commit. It commits to our devil project. On, on OBS, and from that level project, it creates a submit request to factory automatically. But since things can always go wrong, uh, we, in addition, have another check. So every every day, we make sure that uh, everything that is in the repo is already committed to our devil project and submitted to factory. In case it's not, just in case when you introduce the change in the repository, OBS was down or Jenkins has a network problem, whatever. So at least we ensure that the, uh, the build service and the repository are in out of sync no more than 24 hours. Usually they are completely on sync, but at least no more than 24 hours. And in addition, since we already have the toy running, we already have Jenkins, we use it for other tasks. For example, we run continuously uh, auto just integration tests that are uh, in, to some extent, kind of similar to the OpenQA, OpenQA, most of you know. So it's always running the very latest version of our packages and doing a, a whole installation with them and checking that the install system looks like it should. 
But instead of pretending to be a human clicking and moving, it does with auto yes the demo just presented two talks uh, back. So, uh, and in addition, we also have, uh, uh, we are continuing re triggering rebuilds of the Docker image that we use in the previous step. So, we also ensure that the, that Docker images are up to date. So, finally, uh, the source codes or, or the or the package were submitted to factory, and from from there on, you already know the process quite a bit because uh, actually we are having a lot of presentations and workshops and everything about uh, the tumble with development model and, and open QA in this event. So, but the idea is that every submission that goes to factory has to pass through open QA uh, packages that are yeah that have, or submission that have some chains of breaking things have actually a pre-integration test. That's use always the case for just packages because we are kind of the usual suspects to break things because we are the installer after all. So every change in just is suspected to change somehow the installation process. So it's always dangerous for OpenQA to some extent. So, uh, but this part actually we don't need to take care because we have the tumble with maintainers so they always check our packages twice, one for pre-installation and one once they trust them, they are they put them in the same mix that everything else. So we test the full ISO with post integration tests and if everything is green, you have a new version of Jazz in your repository and in your ISOs. So it's really a, quite some steps. That, uh, but everything is automated, everything, everything is triggered by the previous one, so it really is a cascade that takes not so much time, so you always have the greatest and latest. And uh, those was actually about continued delivery, but I have said, used the word test a lot of time during the presentation, so this continuous delivery and continuous testing are really kind of the same thing. And this is kind of su summary summary slide of all the times I have used the test word during the presentation. The first one is a link where we explain from a more technical point of view how we develop all those tests. And actually the, there's something new in the slide that is the last line because apart from all that, we also have manual testing. SUSE have a QA department and open SUSE have a, a group of volunteers that test uh, everything, they coordinate themselves before every leap release to, to test that most things look sane. And also, uh, all tumble with users are part of this effort. They are reporting uh, errors when they find it, so the leap users can sleep uh, quiet because most tumble with uh, users already found and make sure that the errors were fixed. So that's mainly all I wanted to say. I had more slides about explaining how we use the same system not only for tumbleweed or, but also for the fixed release like leap and also for maintenance release so when a, re uh, a version is already out but some critical bug appears you also have to deliver a maintenance update and to fix the bug in, in all the supported versions and for that we also use a very similar mechanism and we also use Travis and we also use Jenkins and so on but uh, it was too much for 15 minutes, so I'm now open to questions. And of course, you can just just approach me at any point in the conference. I will be around if you have anything to ask. So it's now your turn. So I have a question that uh, goes exactly to that topic, but uh, there is two YAST modules called YAST2 CIO and YAST2 S390 that are not in factory at the moment, but are in OpenSUSE factory in the ports project and set systems. Who do I ask to get that into factory? Well, actually, uh, YAST modules uh, are not different from any other packet to, to get, let's say, accepted into factory. It's, it's more a matter of a... Mm. So it does not need the process with testing and all that stuff, although... We will like... You, uh, we would like any just module to use this whole process, but uh, is, this is kind of, let's say the process of the just team. There are always modules that are not developed or maintained by the just team. They don't have to uh, stick to oh, our process is. because if they are just random packages on factory. We would like 
we will encourage you to just approach us and we will set up, set up everything for you so you can have it. It's, but it's actually two modules that are in the enterprise distribution available and they are obviously also... By, uh, then if, uh, we will be more than happy to help you to set up the whole, the whole system. Anything else? Then I'm done.